I'll show you guys the breeding tanks and how I get the eggs. I'm trying to get them to spawn, so they haven't actually spawned for me yet. They're looking really receptive towards each other. So we've had three separate spawns here. We don't need many baby brine shrimp to feed fry in here because they're only gonna eat one or two each. Last night the pump malfunctioned again. I'm just so done with having issues with this. Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Keeping Fish Simple. So in today's video, we are gonna be talking about rams. Now, in specific, we're gonna be talking about breeding rams. Now, I've made a lot of videos on this channel about breeding rams. I guess I've talked about them a lot. I've currently got like three really decent sized spawns up above. Over, you can see them up there on the shelf. And there's heaps and heaps of rams in those spawns. And I've actually bred like thousands of them in the past couple of weeks. Well, maybe not thousands. I probably have about a thousand of them. I kind of wanted to just show you how interesting the process is of breeding these guys. Give you guys all the information on how I breed them and what I do to get this many, because it's pretty easy to do. I struggled with it for a very long time, but now I've kind of got my head around it. Kind of walk you through the reasons why I'm breeding so many of them. Kind of try and share the enjoyment I'm having doing this with you guys. I'm breeding two different types of rams at the moment, and I'm looking to expand into different types in the future. At the moment, I'm only breeding the blue ram, and I'm breeding the black ram. When we breed the blue rams, we just get complete German blue rams, like they're only blue. The black rams are a little bit different, where their genetics are kind of a little bit more interesting, and you get a diversity of different fish coming out of those spawns. When it comes to our black rams we get three different types of rams from my experience we get dark night rams which are pitch black and those are worth a lot of money we get blue black rams which are the medium price ones they kind of look like a german blue ram but they've got like a really nice dark color to them and i think they look a little bit better and then we just get normal blue rams as well so i guess let me go and show you guys all the rams that are in the fish room at the moment i'll show you guys the breeding tanks and how i get the eggs and then i'm going to show you guys the wrigglers and over the next coming days i'm going to connect my auto feeding system to my fry grow out tanks and show you guys exactly how to rear them up and what i do to get this many so let's go take the camera and have a look at all the juveniles in the room. So I'm just gonna walk you around the fish room and show you the sheer quantity of the rams that are in the room. So if we come up here, this is the first tank with rams in it. This is just a grow out tank. I actually have some L333 plecos down the bottom, but in here we have a spawn of a black ram. So now you can see the genetic diversity in here. So these guys are about three weeks old at this point and you can already see the difference in the colors coming out. So right here, this guy right here is a dark night ram. So you can see he's pitch black, much darker than all the other rams in the tank. And next to him are some blue blacks. And then if we come over here, you can see the blues versus the blue blacks. As they get older, their colors are gonna really change and you'll be able to see which ones are which. Like you can see the blue ones from the black ones and the dark nights become super obvious. I'd say I get about 10% dark night rams and then I get about 45% blue black and 45% blue. Yeah, not many dark night rams. They grow a lot slower than the blue blacks. In here, we've got this one dark night ram here. This one up here will also be a dark night ram. Sorry for the algae on the tank. There's a few others in here as well. Probably a spawn of about 120 in here. And these guys will grow out really quickly in this big four foot tank. Moving on, if we come over to the tank next door, we have a huge spawn of these blue rams. So these are just German blue rams. These are actually from the auto feeding video that I did a while back. And you can see just how much they've grown. They don't have a lot of color yet, but there's probably about 250 in here. And you can see here that they're all the same. So there's no like genetic diversity with these. They all just look the same and they breed true. That's what we'd call them in the hobby. As breeders, we'd say that these fish breed true. So something cool with the rams is as they get older, when I do this up the top of the tank, the fish will actually come to the top really aggressively and they'll think that they're getting food, but they're still skittish at this size. So they're not doing that yet. I should probably clean this tank up, but down below in our fry system, we also have some brood stock. These guys are actually black rams and I've been using these as breeders currently. But you can see here as they get older, the difference in color. So that's a blue black ram there on the left and then a blue ram on the right. They really get a lot of color at this size and this is a sellable size. So we have to wait till all of our rams get to this size before we sell them. But here you can see, if I do this, they'll all come to the top of the tank. See, it'll be really cool to see once we have these thousands of rams that are growing out to like come up to the top of all their tanks and do this and see them all come up to the top. You can also see here, there are some dark night rams in here. So there's a little dark night ram in the middle of the screen. Again, it's hard to see because of the algae. You can see he's significantly smaller. There's actually two of them there than the other rams. They're like a lot smaller. And I don't know why that is. They just grow a lot smaller. So normally at this size, I strip them out, try and grow them up a little bit more, and then I sell them. These guys are a lot more pricey. I do have a few available on my website down below if you want to buy them. Moving on over from that side of the fish room, if we come over here to this tank, you can see up here, we also have another spawn 
of Blue Rams. These ones are a little bit smaller. They're about two weeks old. There's probably about 200 in here. They are so cute at this size. It's gonna take them about two months to start getting some real color, but you can see we've got heaps in here as well. And then moving on from there, if we come over to the tank next door, these guys are tiny, but we have another blue black spawn in here. So it's gonna be hard to see them because there's so many bristlenose in here as well. These are the guys we stripped in the last video from the parents and there's a nice little blue black ram there. There's probably about 150 in here, not a crazy amount. These guys are still pretty small. When they're this size, they spend a lot of time hiding. So it's really hard to get a good look at them. You can see down here, there's a couple of little baby dark knight rams. There's another little dark knight ram there. That might actually be a blue black or a dark knight, who knows. Finally, over in this tank, we have the leftovers of one of my blue black ram batches that need to be sold off. So these will probably go to a wholesaler in about a week's time to two weeks time. I've been using these guys as brood stock and you can see here, these guys are really receptive. They'll come up to the top of the tank. There used to be about a hundred in here, but now there's probably only about 30. And yeah, these guys are all ready to get sold. So you can see the blue blacks, the blues together, and you can really see that genetic diversity in the tank. Now, I wanna take you over to this side of the fish room and show you guys these little baby rams that we have in some of these tubs. Up on this side of the fish room, I use a lot of this space for hatching out eggs. And we actually have three separate age groups of rams in these three containers. So we actually have some unhashed eggs in this container. We've got some wrigglers in here that are a little bit older than the wrigglers in here. And obviously we have some wrigglers in this one as well. In this spawn, you can see here, we've got three separate tiles. So we've had three separate spawns here. We've got one spawn here and we've got one spawn here. So what we're gonna be doing throughout this video is I'm gonna show you guys me hatching out all of these rams and getting them all to eat baby brine shrimp in a couple days time. Basically show you the process of rearing them up so that we can move them on to a grow out tank and have successfully then bred them, if that makes sense. I'll come over with my phone and show you guys inside of each of these totes. In here, we have some freshly hatched wrigglers. So these guys are about 24 hours old and you can see just how cute they are. They're just a little tiny body with a tail. And the reason we call them wrigglers is because obviously they just wriggle around and work on building their swimming muscles until they're big enough to start free swimming and then we can start feeding them. So these guys are a little bit bigger and they look a little bit more like rams but they won't start free swimming for another day. So we'll have to get these guys moved into a grow out container very soon. And then in here, we have a group of unhashed eggs. You can see the white ones in this batch. These are the unfertilized eggs. And luckily enough, these won't actually create any fungus and cause any problems to the other eggs on the tile because I've added some methylene blue to this container. Something important to note about all of these containers is I keep the ram eggs in RO water. And that's because when I've kept them in tap water, the parameters of the tap water has too much KH in it. And what that does is it calcifies the shell of the egg and then the rams can't successfully hatch. So ever since I've been keeping them in RO water, I haven't had that issue. I've been having a lot higher hatch rates and a lot more success. Now you're all probably wondering where the heck do these eggs even come from? Well, a few videos ago, I showed you me setting up all of these ram breeding tanks. In this first breeding tank here, you can see we've got a lovely blue black male. And we also have a Dark Knight female in here. So this female recently lost her partner. She actually beat him up and these Dark Knight rams are very aggressive. And now she's with this new younger male. I'm trying to get them to spawn. So they haven't actually spawned for me yet. They're looking really receptive towards each other. They look like they're gonna spawn. So these ram tanks are very easy to set up. You can see I've just got some like terracotta pots around for them to like hide behind. And what they'll do is they'll spawn on one of these like tiles. So they're looking like they're gonna spawn on this one here. And I just take the tile out, hatch it out like I showed you before and try and get them to spawn as much as I can. So to get them to spawn, it's pretty easy. I just feed them blood worms, baby brine shrimp, and high protein foods. Not too much because it's really easy to bloat them, but I feed them nice high quality, high protein food, and the female will plump up. And I just keep them in tap water with an Indian almond leaf for tannins, and they breed pretty consistently. So that's the first tank of breeders. In this tank here, I have four German blue rams, so two pairs. You can see a similar setup. A lot of these tanks actually need a clean, and we'll be doing that later on in the video, but I've got four breeders in here and what'll happen is they'll pair off and each pair will take a corner of the tank. So there'll be one pair up the back and one pair up the front. And normally they breed at the same time. So I just pull out two nice big spawns and hatch them out myself. Down below, I have a little bit of a better looking tank. And in here I have two pairs of blue black rams. So you can see one pair up the front here. There's our male and there's our female. I'm not gonna go too in depth on how to sex them or anything like that because you guys can watch some of my other videos. We also have a nice pair hiding up the back there. They're just another blue black pair. And these guys had a spawn yesterday that we're gonna hatch out, so that's good. And next door, we also have another pair of blue blacks. Something about breeding these guys large scale is you constantly have to have a rotating group of broodstock because what'll happen is these guys will pair off for about two or three spawns and then they'll get bored of each other and they'll fight and it's just not good. So you need to constantly be rotating pairs to keep your spawns coming through. So 
these pairs have all been together for about three to four weeks. This is how I get all the eggs and it's pretty straightforward, just gotta keep some pairs together, feed them high quality foods and give them the right setup and they'll breed. After I'm done hatching out the eggs on this side of the fish room, what I'll then do is I'll move them over here to my fry system and raise them up in here. So what you can see here is we have a nice big four foot tank with a really large volume of water to keep these guys in. And how this system works is we have a pump down in the bottom corner that pumps up water into each one of these containers. You can see here the water gets pumped in. And what happens is when the water gets pumped in, it actually overflows out the back and circulates fresh water in here. And that way the fry have a nice big volume of water to grow out in. You can't stunt them and there's no ammonia spikes or anything like that. And it makes raising the fry super easy. So there's also these airline tubings in here to, to create surface exchange in the water and to stop it from having like a biofilm form over the top of it. But this isn't my idea, this is Dean from Dean's Fish Room's idea and a lot of other fish keepers copy it and it's worked really well for me. But in this container here, we also have a nice little cluster of German blue rams. So these guys are about a week old and they'll be actually getting moved out in a couple of days time to make room for the wrigglers that we're hatching out at the moment. You can now probably kind of understand the general method of breeding these guys and the workflow I have. We have our breeding tanks with our parents in them. We get our parents to spawn, we take the eggs out and we hatch them over here, up in our fry containers. Well, I shouldn't say fry containers, our hatching containers. After they're done hatching, we move them from the hatching containers over to the fry system. This is the tricky part. Uh, what we then do is we set up an auto feeding system that feeds them like every two hours, which I've talked about in a previous video you guys can go and watch. It's really easy to set up if you're serious on doing this. That auto feeding system then feeds these guys a liquid food that I create. I'm actually gonna show you guys how I create that food. It's really easy. But in that liquid food, we have micro worms, egg yolk, and sometimes I add first bites. So I'll show you guys how to do that when we actually have to make it. We move them in there. We feed them with the auto feeding system. It's super easy to use and I'll show you guys that. And after about two to three days, we start introducing some larger foods so we feed them a little bit more micro worms and we start to also feed them some baby brine shrimp and once the whole clutch has started to eat baby brine shrimp our job's pretty much done all we need to do is grow them out for another week in the container and then we can move them into a big grow out tank grow them out to adult size and we take them to a wholesaler and sell them what i'm going to do off camera is set up a micro worm culture. I've actually got a video on my channel you guys can go and watch. We're gonna set that culture up so we have some food to feed them when they're ready to eat. And then I'm gonna catch up with you guys in a couple days time. We're gonna move our wrigglers into a container and I'll show you guys exactly how to raise them up. Okay, so it's now a few days later and we're back in the fish room and we've got all of our little baby black rams and baby blue rams in the one container. Yesterday was actually Christmas, so I didn't come in and record anything too substantial, but I did have to come in and feed these guys and actually transfer them over to this tub. And that's how committed I am to making sure you guys get this content. So leave a like down below because I did have to come in here on Christmas. I wouldn't have come in if it wasn't for this video and for these rams. As you would remember, I had the two batches of rams. Well, I actually had three. The first batch that we had that was very small, I combined with the second batch because it was so big. The second batch of rams had probably close to 300 to 400 rams in it. So I just combined the two of them. They're all in this container now. The eggs that we had in the third batch of rams actually went infertile. I'm not too sure why. I think they might've just been infertile the whole time or something could have gone wrong. I'm not too sure. Not a lot we can do about it anyways. So as you can see in this tub, we've actually set it up so the auto feeding system is working. So I was feeding all throughout yesterday and all throughout the night last night. I actually had to come in and fill that up again. As we go around this tub, you can see that there is still a few dead ones in there and that's what you're gonna get when you're breeding these kinds of rams. I mean, they're so inbred and their genetics aren't the best. So just straight off the bat, you're gonna lose a few, but we've actually managed to keep quite a lot of them. Now, I did feed them some baby brine shrimp this morning and a few of them were able to eat it. This afternoon when we come in, we're also gonna be feeding them some more baby brine shrimp. And I guess the goal with this batch now is to keep as many as we can and get them all onto baby brine shrimp. From what I can see, there's actually quite a lot of baby black rams in here. So that makes things even better because obviously the black rams are worth quite a bit more than the blue rams. I'm actually going away again on New Year's. So I'm going away in three days time. Hopefully we can get them to a size where they're actually big enough to go into a big four foot tank. Then what I'm gonna do is add a ton of just mold in that tank or try and leave as much dirt and stuff in there so that when I'm gone for the two nights, they actually survive during that period. So what we're gonna need to do is really put on a lot of size over the next three days 
and try and get them as big as possible when we move them into that other tanks. Yeah, everything's going really good at the moment, besides that first initial kind of die off that you're going to get anyways. You can see they've all started free swimming. They're all eating micro worms. I've still got the auto feeding system set up. So there's rapashi, grub pie in there and micro worms in there. And hopefully everything continues to go well. Okay, so it's now the afternoon and I've switched over to my iPhone camera because it's a little bit easier to record in these fry boxes with my iPhone as I can just come over to the box, come underneath and have a look inside of it because it's not as bulky of a setup. So anyways, what we're gonna do now is give these guys a feed of baby brine shrimp. So you can see that they've been eating lots of powdered foods and they've also been throughout the day eating my liquid food through the auto feeding system. Now over here, I've actually got some baby brine shrimp and if you come and have a look at the top, all those little things swimming around are actually little Artemia brine shrimp and I hatch these out on a daily basis and feed them to a ton of my different baby fish and they're really, really good for raising up baby fish. So what we're gonna do is give these guys a feeding now what I like to do when I feed this stuff is I've seen a lot of breeders like to use some kind of strainer and strain out the baby brine shrimp so no salt water gets into the containers but I don't really worry about that too much. I just go ahead and get a syringe, not a syringe, a pipette and squirt that stuff along the top. Now we're only probably going to need one squirt of this. We don't need many baby brine shrimp to feed fry in here because they're only going to eat one or two each. So we'll see if these guys start to eat any of it. You can see the little baby brine shrimp's going over this side fry are kind of running around and looking interested. So you can see up the top of the water a couple of little baby brine shrimp swimming around and you can see the fry kind of darting at them a little bit. So what it looks like is some of the fry are big enough to eat them but some of them are still a little bit too small. This is obviously very hard. There we go. Did you see that little guy there? Just eat one in the middle of the screen. He spat it out but he just swallowed one. From what it seems they are actually able to eat them which is really good because this is going to help them to put on a lot of size real quick because it's so full of protein and so many other different nutrients that help these guys to really grow. So you can actually get a way better look here. Probably the most satisfying part of feeding these guys is getting them onto baby brine shrimp because I can kind of rest easy and now I know that they're kind of on a stable food and they're not likely to perish at this point. So as long as they continue to eat baby brine shrimp, they're going to grow and turn into little rams and probably all grow up to adulthood. This is really good to see. Yeah, they've eaten most of that baby brine shrimp over here. We've got a little bit of consumption over here as well. You can see some of them are a little bit weak and probably won't make it through, but that's okay. That's just probably due to genetics or something like that. That's probably not my fault. Some of the stronger ones are having their first meal of baby brine shrimp. So everything looks good with this batch. What we're going to do now is see how much they grow overnight and I'll catch up with these guys either tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon and show you guys how much bigger they are. Hopefully everything continues to go well overnight and yeah, fingers crossed everything's good tomorrow. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay, so we're back on the phone camera and it's now the following day and if we come and have a look inside of our RAM tub, we've actually had a few issues which I want to talk about. So you can see along the edges of the tub, I haven't cleaned this up yet, but there are a few bodies of some dead rams which might offend a few people, but this is just part of breeding fish. I'm not gonna lie and I'm not gonna pretend that this doesn't happen. There are a few ones that are dead. I'm not too sure what the cause of these are, but something really annoying happened overnight. And I really have to fix up this fry system because this is still like the prototype of what I originally wanted to create. And that's Dean's fry system. Now you can see it's kind of dirty down here. There's just a lot of surface algae and there's actually fish in here. I have to pretty much do a complete renovation of the system because I've had way too many issues and I'm just done with having issues. Last night the pump malfunctioned again. What happened was it first off started pumping too much water and the water started to overflow and what was happening is baby rams were getting stuck up on top of this sponge and just suffocating and dying. The other thing that happened is it then turned off and then the baby rams dried out on the top here and it stopped pumping in fresh water and a lot of the rams died from that. Now, there are quite a few rams still in here and they're all down in this corner. They're all eating baby brine shrimp. There's lots of black ones in there and it wasn't a complete fail. This is obviously just due to that fry system not working properly. And like I said, I will be doing a video in the future, just pretty much taking this completely apart, setting it up. There's not gonna be any fish in this tank and we're just gonna really try and get this proper because I'm just so done with having issues with this. And as I upgrade fish rooms in the coming months, I really don't need issues with this fry system malfunctioning while I'm away from the fish room and just ruining all my yields and all my income. So that's a little bit annoying, but at least we do have, oh, the auto feeding system just came on. There you go, you can see it working now. That's a bit random. So anyways, that is really annoying, but I mean, this is all part of fish keeping. It's all part of learning. I can guarantee you that in the next fish room, 
we're not going to have these issues or we will still have the issues but it'll be less frequent and our yields will be a lot better anyways guys i think we're going to wrap this video up here so i know i said i was going to get these guys into a grow out tank and i am going to do that it's just going to take a few more days and there's really no point in me recording it anymore because we've got them all on baby branch right now and they're all doing pretty well. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys learned something. Stay tuned for that future upcoming video, setting up the fry system. I'm sure a lot of you guys wanna see that. If you do wanna see it, leave a comment down below. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one.